Good morning and welcome to worship at St. Mark's United Methodist Church. Wherever you are this morning, we're glad that you are worshiping with us. You may have noticed that uh, the prelude was played by somebody that didn't look a lot like Elizabeth. Uh, and we're so grateful this morning to have Michael filling in since Liz is feeling under the weather today. So um, again, we welcome you, invite you to sign in and let us know of your attendance this morning. Our liturgist this morning is Mary Hayes, and together we are going to share in the call to worship, and we invite you at home to participate where it says people. What do you seek in this season of Epiphany? We seek God's vision for ourselves, our church, our country, and our world. Fill our worship with your hope, love, and expectation. We listen with anticipation. Please join me in this morning's Please join me in this morning's prayer. Light of the world, we bow before you in awe and adoration. Reveal to us what we need to know to love you, to serve you, and to keep your word with fidelity and truth, courage and hope, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mary. Good morning. I'm Pastor Julia Gonzalez, and I have a few and quick announcements for you this morning. As a reminder, this announcement is specifically for the children and youth of St. Mark's. You guys, we want you connected. We want you taking part, and we've got a few different ways for you to do so. If you are aged three years old through fourth grade, we have a Zoom live session every Sunday from 10 to 10.30 a.m. If you would like that to join and use that, get that link, you can send an email to Kids Church, that's K-I-D-Z-C-H-U-R-C-H, at stmarkscarmel.org. 
And if you are in fifth or sixth grade, you are invited to attend weekly Club 56 gatherings, which are also on Zoom. And that is from 1 to 2 p.m. on Sundays. And you can also get that Zoom link from Kids Church, K I D Z, at stmarkscarmel.org. Um, for our high schoolers, we still have cornerstone opportunities. So, uh, and for middle schoolers, shouldn't forget those, sorry. Uh, we also have Instagram Live that happens at 10 a.m. and at 10.30. And it's looking like the weather is nice enough that we may just be able to go to Kotiwi today. So keep an eye out for announcements from Don Broad about further youth events that you would like to take part in. Adults, we want you to connect too. Don't think we're forgetting you. And one of the ways that we connect here at St. Mark's is through our opportunities for spiritual growth. We have several wonderful Sunday and uh, weekday morning Bible study opportunities, and we're also looking to start a weeknight uh, study group. So if you are interested in taking part in a weeknight uh, Bible study, please register your interest at stmarkscarmel.org slash studygroups, one word, and Jennifer Cloud Buckner, our adult discipleship coordinator, will be in touch with you about this new study info. If you have ever taken part in a walk to Eumaeus, a chrysalis flight, a great banquet, Curcio, Tres Dias, or a similar intensive spiritual weekend, you are invited to join a Zoom social gathering of St. Mark's folks who have attended these events to meet each other and share memories. This will be on January 31st from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. You can learn more at stmarkscarmel.org slash walkalumni. For service opportunities, uh, please be aware that we are still collecting new or gently used winter wear to help keep men, women, and children warm during the harsh winter months. Needed items are coats, sweatshirts, sweatpants, pajamas, scarves, hats, and gloves. If you have any of those types of clothing and are willing to donate, please do so outside of door number two. In additional announcements, I would now like to invite uh, Missy Koenig with a very special connectional announcement. Good morning, St. Mark's. Um, it is great to be able to welcome you this morning, and it is a joy to be connected and worship with you. Um, and speaking of connection, I wanted to just invite you to participate in a, a new connection opportunity here at St. Mark's, and that is through becoming a pen pal. Uh, pen pal with someone new who maybe you're not acquainted with here at St. Mark's. So if you would be interested in that, um, you can send me your contact information. And um, what I'll be doing is randomly pairing people together. And then you can contact one another, um, decide on the means of communication you'd like to use and the frequency of communication. And then later on this year, hopefully in the summer months, we are planning a pen pal party so people can um, fellowship and gather in person. So if you are interested, please do email me at mkoenig at stmarkscarmel.org. I've actually already had a couple people speak up to participate, so I'm really excited to get this underway. God bless. Thank you very much, Missy. A few final announcements. Please remember to register your Sunday morning attendance by visiting our website, stmarkscarmel.org slash attend. We really appreciate you letting us know that you are at home with St. Mark's, and that is also an opportunity to list any prayer requests that you have that you would like the pastors or prayer chain to be aware of. Every month we have a different mission focus as we seek to welcome, grow, and serve and the monthly mission focus for January is Mission Guatemala. Mission Guatemala is a United Methodist-related organization providing aid to indigenous Mayan communities in rural Guatemala. Thanks to the generous support from many partners like St. Mark's, Mission Guatemala was able to purchase their clinic property in 2020. Projects continue, such as a medical and dental clinic, feeding centers for chronically malnourished children, water filters for schools and families, fuel-efficient wood-burning stoves, and much more. 
For more information, you can visit missionguatemala.org, and we would ask that financial donations to help this vital ministry may be given online at stmarkscarmel.org slash give, and selecting that you want that money specifically to go to the mission field and to Mission Guatemala. You can also go to stmarkscarmel.org slash give to give your weekly tithe, or you can always use our text-to-give option or send a check into the church building. As a final reminder, if you are bringing in any items for the sack meals to both Fletcher Place and Roberts Park this week, all food donations are needed by tomorrow, Monday, January 25th. Thank you for serving to provide meals for these communities in need. And remember that because you give and because you serve, St. Mark's gives and St. Mark's serves. At this time, I want to invite you to move forward in our worship to a time of prayer and contemplation. Would you please pray with me? Lord, as the poet and prophet Amanda Gorman said this week, we are far from polished, far from pristine, but that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. Rather, we are striving to forge a union with purpose. Her words were given in connection to the United States of America, but let us feel this truth, this desire for purposeful connection beyond nationalism. Our union with one another, with all our siblings in Christ, with all who share the land, with all who share this earth. Help us, Lord, to seek to be in an on-purpose union, in an on-purpose relationship with everyone. Lord, you know that sometimes it isn't easy. Sometimes we lose our way. Sometimes we run away. But through it all, God, you are still there helping and guiding us through every pitfall and trap, through every moment of anger and despair. Lord, you are there. Forgive us for those times where we have failed. Forgive us when we have fallen. Forgive us when we have turned away. For you are a loving and compassionate God, full of mercy, seeking to save and not to destroy. Help us to remember and to know it within our souls that we are still under your guiding care. And help us to share that love with the world. Teach us, Lord, by the work of your Spirit. Speak to us even still that we may know that we are not alone in this world. And Lord, when the words are hard to come by, when we don't know what to say, when we struggle with how should we should pray, give us again and help us remember the words that your Son taught us to pray, saying together with one voice and one heart, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
This morning's gospel lesson comes from Mark, the first chapter, verses 14 through 20. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Our lesson from the Old Testament today comes from a story that might be familiar to us. It's the story of Jonah. Reading these verses from the third chapter, verses 1 through 5 and 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. So Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and then he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about that calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So here, these words from Frederick Buechner. We must be careful with our lives for Christ's sake, because it would seem that they are the only lives we are ever going to have in this puzzling and perilous world. To have, and so they are very precious, and what we do with them matters enormously. Let us pray. O God, open our hearts and our minds that we might hear what you have to say to us today. Amen. I suspect you remember this story from the Old Testament from your Sunday school days, or maybe you don't. Maybe you just remember reading um, a little or hearing a song. I think it's a song, What to Do When You're in the Belly of the Whale. Dan Albergati, I believe is his name. And there's a whole list of things you can do in the belly of a whale. But it's a story. People need stories. We need stories that connect us to other people. We need stories that connect us to God. So let me go back and tell you a little bit more about this Jonah story. The text we heard this morning was the second time he tried to go to Nineveh. Well, actually, it was the first time he attempted. The first time, as you might recall, um, Jonah went down to Tarshish to find a ship in order to flee from God's desire for him to go to Nineveh and to tell them that God was about to destroy them. So he gets on a boat. You remember this? And the boat is in this terrible storm, winds raging, all that sort of thing. And uh, the people on the boards uh, on the ship are saying to you know, what's causing this? Why is this happening to us? They were afraid, and each one of them cried to their God. 
they lightened the load, they threw things into the sea, and, um, and then they found Jonah. He'd gone down into the hold. He was fast asleep. And the captain says to him, what are you doing sound asleep? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us a thought so that we will not perish. Um, and then the sailors do a thing we've heard about before, casting lots, and they cast a lot. And they decide that Jonah's the reason they're having all this problem. And they throw him into the ocean. And then Jonah pleads and prays, and he's swallowed by a fish. Often we think this is a whale, but for us, I suppose the, the biggest thing we know that could swallow a human being is a whale, so let's just call it a whale. He's swallowed in the belly of the whale, and it doesn't take long before the whale gets a little upset stomach from having this, you know, this person in his stomach. Maybe it's whale heartburn. I don't know. But whatever happened, three days, you know, in the belly of the whale, he's spewed out. Even the whale doesn't want him. And so that's where we pick up with the text that was read this morning saying, you know, Jonah, let's try this again, God says. You get yourself to Nineveh. And what happens in Nineveh? Oh my goodness. Something I suspect Jonah didn't want to hear. Because he was really upset about all of this. And all of a sudden, the people in Nineveh repent. They put on sackcloth. And God changes his mind. God turns away from his anger for the people in Nineveh. And he says, okay, here we are. All is well. Then what happened? God's not angry anymore, but who is? Jonah. <laughs> Jonah, well, I can't use the word I was just thinking about, but Jonah was really angry. He says, why is this happening? You know, Nineveh's a huge town. It almost seems improbable. It says three days to walk across. Well, Nineveh is in the place now that is modern-day Mosul in Iraq. So think about it the big city. And then you have to begin to think that Jonah is saying to himself, I didn't do a very good job. What in the world? How did these people figure this out? Why are they doing this? Come on, you said you were going to get rid of them. Let's get rid of them. Jonah's story is this the only story Jonah has? I suspect not. I suspect there's more to Jonah's life than this story. But this is the only one we get, and we hear and see his anger. I mean, it's festering inside of him. He's boiling inside, and it's hot outside, and he's sitting under this plant. And, it, you know, it just, everything just seems to say to Jonah, I'm just tired of this. I'm just tired. But what he failed to see, it appears, was God's great love for the people of Nineveh. People who weren't exactly the most faithful. People who probably were doing all sorts of crazy things. And can we actually believe that all of them repented? Maybe it's the consequence of one person turning around. We heard in the text from Mark this morning God's invitation through Jesus to repent, to turn around. And what does Jesus do? He makes them fishermen. You go out there and get those people. Bring them in. Bring them in. 
And we know what happens with the disciples, too. We can tell their stories. There are moments when they really get it. But there are moments like when Jesus has the little children in his lap and they say, what are you doing? Their anger. This isn't what you should be doing. So often in our lives, we let our anger become the hook on which we tell our stories. What if the hook for our stories were the times when we were able to see just a glimpse of God's great love for us? I've been reading a lot of Buechner this week. That's why I have a couple of other quotes from him. I'm only going to use one, I think. But he says, of the deadly, seven deadly sins, anger is possibly the most fun. To lick your wounds, to smack your lips over grievances long past, to roll over your tongue the prospect of bitter confrontation still to come, to savor to the last mo morsel both the pain you are given and the pain you are giving back. In many ways, it is a feast fit for a king. The chief drawback is that what you are wolfing down is yourself. The skeleton of this feast is you. What is the story we are telling ourselves these days? Is it a story of abandonment? Is it a story of anger that God has not taken care of those who have been mean to us? Is it a story of hope? Is it a story like this story of Nineveh where God shows such compassion for a great city whose people, probably not all of them, put on sackcloth? but enough that there was room for forgiveness and for hope. The text both in Mark and in Jonah this week are about repentance and the consequences. That's the sermon title, the consequences of, for, of repentance. And I've thought about this a whole lot this week. It seems to me the con one of the consequences of repentance is that you see where you have become better than other people and that you've got your life in order, and why can't they? And so one of the consequences is we always have to keep repenting. It's not a static act. It's a constant reminder of God's goodness in our life. It's like Jonah. We try to run away, and we get swallowed up in something else, and we get spit out, and we try again. The story, our stories, not of perfection, but of being perfected in God's love over and over and over again. Amen. Jesus, 
take bitterness away. Let me forgive as one forgiven, and bring me peace today. Know me, mind of Jesus, and show me all my sin. Dispel the memories of guilt, and bring me peace within. Fill me, joy of Jesus, anxiety shall cease, and heaven's serenity be mine, for Jesus brings me peace. And now may the grace and love, the forgiveness and the healing power of God through Jesus Christ be with you in this week and in every time to come. Amen. Thank you.